Hey guys, so I thought about it a little bit more about Mythic Markets and I truly do believe they are targeting Magic players because their whole investment pits and whole platform and whole website says that they do comics, they do esports, they do sports cards and memorabilia, which is a more, these are much huger markets, right? Than Magic the Gathering. Even Pokemon, I would say, is a larger market than Magic the Gathering as for fractional ownership in terms of like who may be interested as Pokemon has wider appeal because of uh, first edition base boxes are more recent. That was around Urza Saga. So, and then Pokemon itself has really just exploded in terms of investors and people looking for investment opportunities in Pokemon. It's really strange to me that their two products, which have now finished, have both been magic products. If you are a real business, you want to show diversity. You want to show your investors, the people who put $2 million in for you to go party, for you to go drinking, for you to go hotel rooms, for you to have meetings in Las Vegas, uh, a la Pico Trade, right? That's what they did with their money. Uh, it was pretty fascinating. Uh, Pico Trade, if you don't remember, go funded me like everything. Hey, we need a website. Go fund me. Hey, we need a new website. Go fund me. We need a hired developer. Go fund me. So literally, their business model was not let's make a good business and let's make some profit and let's make the best product for our consumer. Their business model, Pico Trade's business model, was simply if we need money, a la Wedge, we'll just ask the community for money. And they've oh man, did they ask the community for money, right? Or they can just uh, make Pico points and pay their content creators, pay dis disputes, pay their managers, pay their employees with Pico points, which actually just comes from, you guessed it, the Magic player base. So let's just talk a little bit about Mythic Markets and why I find it so strange. Now, Rudy, I think he's 100% right. These people are shady as F, right? I've looked into their LinkedIn. They're nothing special. They at most were associates. Associates. Not partners. Not owners. Not co-founders. They were associates. Which means, you know, at this age, and I mean, you got to own something, dude. And of course, they own Mythic Markets. Now, you do have some YouTubers. I don't need to repeat um, his name again, who love this product so much that they bought shares on a YouTube video. I find that a little suspect, but uh, regardless of how suspect it is, how maybe weird it seems to me personally, hey, I've been pitched, not that I've accepted, but I've been pitched far worse, uh, <laughs> you know, far worse products uh, in the mobile game, mostly mobile games or deck boxes made from wood that I think cost probably looked like it cost $20 to make, maybe $15, and they want to charge $100 for it. It's like, mm, no, no one needs a $100 deck box. That's my opinion. I own a $1,000 playmat, the Black Lotus, not Black Lotus, Mox Diamond Limited Edition. I have a certificate. I have the plaque. I have everything. It's selling for 1000 bucks on eBay right now without the certificate and plaque which if you were a true collector, you would want. It's the best playmat. I mean, I never even show it to you guys anymore. I don't know, because I have custom playmats. I don't like them better. So I own probably close to 800 dual lands. I own this, I own that. But I don't think anyone needs a $100, $150 deck box. I'd much rather have a single dual land at that cost. All right, so they respond, and they're getting a little angry. They think Rudy has you know, inaccurate opinions about themselves. And now they want to redefine their new qualifying statement, which is April 07, 2020. And please review and understand the following definitions. <laughs> Come on, dude. No, 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 you idiots. No. Okay, so here's the problem that I find. And so obviously, I'm part of other communities that I spend large chunks of money on. Uh, I've been into the, what is it called, the sideshow community, and it's all just wealthy people. 
Which makes sense because, I mean, each sideshow is like a $500, $600 and has like a one-year waiting list. So it's not like for people. It's not like for normal people. And what I found, what I found was very simple about this. I think Magic is the only community that has been scammed like it is. So in the anime figure community, for instance, people do value their reputation. They do take care of their anime merchandise. They do take care of their figures. Sometimes the conditions are a big problem, right? Oh, this is broke. This is not broke because that would really affect the resale value of anime figures. But then there's websites that you can go on. You can put your figures on there. And to a lesser extent, Funko figures, there are somewhat scams, but those are at lower end. I mean, you're not talking about $55,000 or $90,000 here. You're talking about maybe $10,000, $15. In these communities, you are governed by reputation and respect for your follow, fellow person, for your fellow collector. So um, most of my anime figure friends, collecting friends, are female. And I'll head over to their home and see their figure collection and be like, oh, wow, that's a cool figure. Where did you get it? Okay, cool figure. And then they'll come over to my home. They'll look at the figures and be like, oh, wow, these are really nice. And it's a mutual respect, right? So when I open my trade binder and you open your trade binder, we're both trying to screw each other at that point. We're both saying, oh, what do you value this at? What do you value this at? What do you value this? No one goes to like my home and it's like, what do you value that figure at? What do you value this figure at? What, just trying to catch me slipping, right, on the price. That doesn't happen in these communities, right? Like in these communities, you're agreed to a website, you look at the prices, and then you see if you want to do a trade, do you want to throw some cash on top. It's really respectful. And then you have lunch or dinner afterwards. It's really respectful. In the magic community, it is just disrespect. And I own a magic store, so I can tell you the difference between and I think that's why, you know, the Chapman, the whole MTG price, MTG, uh, what was it? Their finances, secret uh, Discord channel for $8 a month. Like that doesn't surprise me in Magic. But in any other community, uh, that would surprise me. I would be like, oh, hmm, that's kind of weird. Why would we pay $8 to get inside information from a creepy source, which then we give $10,000 to, to buy us some figures that he's never going to send us. Much wow. And so my point is very simple. I absolutely agree with, with Alpha Investment. Uh, that's hard to say, but that's what I'm going to say. I absolutely agree with Alpha Investment on Mythic Markets because their counter, their responses to this is very legal jargon but it actually doesn't say very much so it's meant to fill up the page and when you actually read it it doesn't explain why rudy is wrong clearly they watched the video they time stamped the video and then they made a response to rudy um i still believe rudy is absolutely on correct about this company because there's loopholes, there's things that you can do. Puker Trade, for instance, is a very good example. They, you, they went to GP Vegas. They threw a huge party. They reserved like a whole bar in Las Vegas to throw a party for MTG personalities. And the bill on this party was in excess of $10,000. Some people say it's $50,000, some maybe more. The CEO walked away with $5 million. Where did that money come from? It came from the GoFundMe's. It came from... Look, if I have a company and I need to hire a developer, full-time developer, I'm going to try to make money to hire that person. I'm not going to start a GoFundMe to have my customers pay for this developer, which they're already paying for. Does that make sense? A customer would be you, the user of PukaTrade, and you're already getting your Pico points inflated. And I can talk about Pico points right now when I previously could not talk about them in this way because Tolarian Community College and Weds and Friends would protect it. They'd be like, oh, no, it's great. It's not definitely not a scam. But now we all know what happened to Pico Trade. And it's pretty obvious that Mythic Markets is Pico Trade 2.0. 
It is a technology company, a tech company. But really, it doesn't do anything. Like, let's let's really consider what this is. Rudy's right. If you have enough money, why would you buy a fractional share? So each of the 98 investors on average, so let's call it 100 investors, put in $550. Why didn't these people just buy the Fallen Empire's Booster Box if they thought that it was going to go up in price and each of these 100 people could own a booster box of Zenicar. What, what's 550? I don't know. I know Stronghold's a thousand, so they couldn't afford a thousand. But even if they were just two friends out of this group, 1100, you can buy a box of Stronghold, no problem. So why are they doing this? If it is a small time investor, which is not because there's only 98 of them, on average, these 98 people are putting $550. That's not a small amount of money. This isn't your average Joe who's going to put 550 to get a binder and a gift certificate or stock certificate and a pin. It's really just to push the price higher and then the investors, the dummy investors will give more money to this dummy company. And then this dummy, then the dummy investors are sold to another dummy investor and then it just makes us look bad, okay? The only reason they're doing Magic the Gathering Instead of all the other things they can do, which they have way more customers, but then comic books, way more. Pokemon, way more. It, sports cards, way more. Sports memo, way more. Like lit esports, way more. Why did they choose the one area, the one card game with the least amount of people interested and probably the least amount of money in it? It's because we're gullible. They saw Puka Trade. They saw Monthly Magic Box. They saw Chapman from Wired Article. And they're like, wow, these people are suckers. We can get them real good. I mean, Chapman didn't even give you a uh, pin or a binder or a, a nicely printed stock certificate. At the very least, when you gave Chapman your $10,000, you weren't getting anything back. With, except the slow promise he would refund you your money. And that's what we're used to. Same with monthly magic box, same with Puka Trade. You know, people lost their skins over Puka Trade, right? They don't talk about it because they feel ashamed. But it was definitely not great. And it could only happen in Magic the Gathering. Those things do not exist in other, other collectible areas. Bye, guys.